Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Sports A to Fay. I'm your host, Logan Graffia, and today we're going to get into the two main hot topics, and that is the LSU defensive woes. And on the other end, we have the New Orleans Saints offensive woes and much, much more to get in onto the Saints topic. But first, you got to hear the theme music. Play it. Okay, so let's talk about what everyone wants to hear about first, the New Orleans Saints. Yesterday or Sunday when they played against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Baker Mayfield at the quarterback position leading the charge, the Saints lost 26-9. to That was the most ugliest offensive outing I have seen as a Saints fan since probably the Jim Hazlitt era, where we had Jim Hazlitt, Mike McCarthy, calling the shots. And it feels almost very painfully similar. And it's sad to see because the Saints have offensive weapons. They do. Derek Carr is a good quarterback. I'm not going to put full blame on him. Does he share some of the blame? Yes. Has he been performing well? Not really. He's been kind of... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. You you get Kamara back, 11 carries of 51 yards. And Michael Thomas, Rashid Saeed, Alvin Kamara. I mean, you throw the ball to Kamara 13 times for 33 yards. And essentially, gets nowhere. And I'm just wondering, the play calling, I know my Madden folks out there are going to know what I'm talking about. It seems like the play calling is just four verticals, sticks, and halfback dive. That's three plays that I think that the Saints are calling. And it is truly, truly disgusting. I am absolutely baffled as to... What is this, the play calling? The play calling is awful. The defense that was on an historical pace, historical pace of not allowing more than 20 points in a game, you know, past two games, 20 points. They're doing what they can, but the play calling on offense is abysmal. I mean, I don't think any quarterback or any player can flourish in this offense. I mean, like I said, Derek Carr, I'm not going to put it all on him. I mean, can he audible out of it? Yes, but, I mean, when you have an offensive coordinator that's incompetent, like Pete Carmichael Jr., it's third and one. You do a play-action bomb? Really? Hmm. Third and one. You have to get a first down to move the chain. Yeah, call a play action bomb. Not even a flat route or a slant route or a swing route. You, you call a bomb on third and one. You don't even put Taysom Hill in. Now, they play Taysom Hill a lot more. I'll give them credit for that. But this is the worst offense of outing for the Saints I've seen in quite some time, probably since the Katrina Saints year. <laughs> it, it was just, it's just been abysmal, abysmal to say the least. I am absolutely frustrated, and everyone has a right to be frustrated. I think, so, I think it's time for P. Carmichael Jr. to go. You, you have to let him go because there was a video, there's a picture going around. I even posted it on my Twitter. I don't know if anyone's seen it. And even uh, my guy Caden, go give him a follow if you find him on uh, Twitter or X. There's a video. Carr is with Michael Thomas, Rashid Shaheed, Alvin Kamara. They're all discussing stuff. And who are the coaches in the video? Cody Burns, the receiver's coach, and Ronald Kirby, the QB's coach. P. 
Peacock Michael Jr. is nowhere to be found. Pretty telling, huh? I think it's time for P. Carmichael to take an analyst role and give up his play calling duties to Ronald Curry. And if you want to see what a Ronald Curry offense looks like, go watch the Senior Bowl, the national team with Jake Hayner leading the charge. That's why they drafted Jake Hayner because Ronald Curry worked with Jake Hayner at the Senior Bowl calling plays for him. I think it's time to give Ronald Curry a shot. I honestly can't see a better option right now this year. I mean, everyone's going to say, bring Gruden in, bring Gruden in. I want them to bring Gruden in. But I don't think he's just going to take an offensive coordinator job after being a head coach for all those years. He might, I mean, it's shot in the dark, throw a Hail Mary to see what. <laughs> it's just I am absolutely speechless. I mean, the absolute, the defense looked, the defense did not look missed tackles. That was the most missed tackles I've seen by this defense. And you have Baker Mayfield out there juking people out of their shoes. I mean, that is just absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Everyone has a right to be frustrated. I am frustrated because what I see in that camp is not what I see on the field. What I see in that camp was a lethal offense, and it was moving quick, fast-paced. What I see now is just Pete Carmichael is just absolutely staining this team with just poor offensive play calling. He needs to go. Usually I would be the professional one and say, okay, maybe give him a shot. But no, I have not liked the Pete Carmichael, keeping Pete Carmichael since DA took over as head coach. I wasn't even a fan of Dennis Allen being hired as the head coach, but I love some of the defensive staff that he's brought along, but nevertheless, P. Carmichael Jr. didn't even want the job, you guys. They asked him to do it. He said no at first, but when they couldn't find anyone, the DA actually, like, they gave it back to P. Carmichael Jr. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's time for him to go. Time for him to go. And right now, I am working on, actually, an article for the Sports A2 say website about some offensive candidates, offensive coordinator candidates, I should say, so, <laughs> will the offense get better? Only if P. Carmichael Jr. relinquishes his offensive play calling duties. And that is all I have to say about that for now. I, 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 one last thing, actually. Everyone wants to put the blame on Derek Carr. Did he play well yesterday? No. I mean, 23 of 37 for 127 yards. Average of four yards per pass, not going to cut it, not going to cut it. And I know everyone wants to see Jameis Winston. He won't flourish in this offense either. He didn't flourish in it last year. So I'm putting all blame on Pete Carmichael Jr. Dennis Allen has to make a change, and if he won't, it's time for Gale and Mickey to make a change. It's absolutely imputative that they make a change. It's time for Pete Carmichael Jr. to go. It's time, you guys. Now we got to talk about the LSU football game that happened over the weekend against Ole Miss. And it started out rough. You have LSU driving, but then Jane Daniels goes to run out of bounds, gets absolutely hit stick, fumbles the ball, and Ole Miss takes over, drives it down the field with ease, and scores. Now, I have to say this. The defense for LSU is absolutely horrendous. Absolutely horrendous, you guys. When the offense scores 49 points, nine times out of 10, you're supposed to win the football game. When your offense puts up 49 points, your offense, I mean, your team is supposed to win the football game. Missed tackles, poor coverage, I mean, miscommunications. Matt House, I don't know what you are doing, but it might be time for you to go. Now, I have my choices for defensive coordinator for this team, but I, you would have to wait till 
next after the season is over with the cut bait with Madhouse. But Jay Daniels can't not be overlooked in this game. 27 to 36, 414 yards passing, four touchdowns, 15 carries of 99 yards, one touchdown. Jay Daniels accounted for almost 500 yards of the offense. The offense is a championship level offense. This is a championship offense, you guys, but this is a junior varsity defense. Now, are there some defenders that you can highlight? Absolutely. I mean, Andre Sand, Major Byrne, Greg Penn, Harold Perkins, Whit Weeks, and I'm, I'll even shout out Zai Alexander because he's had a few pass breakups that were very, very good. Mason Smith who we all thought was Aaron Donald, going to be the Aaron Donald of LSU on the defensive line, hasn't really looked apart. Maybe he will eventually get it going, but you have seven games left this year. Seven games left. You are ranked 23rd right now. You are going to be playing against Mizzou, who has... I think the number one receiver in terms of receiving yards in the country. And LSU's defense ranks 117 out of 130. That is just putrid. Absolutely putrid. I don't know what Matt House can do to fix this, if he even can, but the scheme is wrong. You have Harold Perkins playing coverage. I get the, the sentiment of, oh, we want him to play the position that we feel is best for him to play in the NFL. Well, you guys, this ain't the NFL. Brian Kelly, Matt House, this ain't the NFL. This is the NCAA. This is LSU football. Perkins is better suited as a pass rusher, edge rusher, rushing the quarterback, spying the quarterback, which he hasn't done this year, which worked beautifully last year. I don't get it. Why change what worked? I think it might be time for Matt House to go. And because, I mean, you have talent on defense. I get you have a bunch of transfers, but you have talent on defense. The miscommunication, the missed tackles, poor, like the tackling has been awful. The blown assignments in the secondary. The secondary is awful. I mean, there's some, there's a couple players. Like, you know, Zay Alexander, Major Burns, Andre Sam. I will highlight them. Deuce Chestnut didn't play in the last game, but, you know, Denver Harris looks like he – ah, there's not many positives I can say about the LSU defense. I am just very, very, very upset that we have a championship offense. This, all, this team has an offense that can win a championship this year. Jane Daniels is playing like a Heisman Trophy winner like I said he would. Logan Diggs, the running back, is playing the part. 19 carries, 100 yards, two touchdowns, averaging five yards a carry against Ole Miss. Virtually unstoppable on offense. I mean, you have an offense, Jay Daniels, Logan Diggs, Brian Thomas, Malik Neighbors, Mason Smith, Kyron Lacey. Chris Hilton missed a, uh, a pass early in the game, which was very vital. I mean, I know Jaden had a fumble, but, I mean, he rebounded. The offense and the team rebounded in the second half as much as they could, the, um, they had 42. They, they, they took the lead at one point, you guys, and you all watched the game. But then it came down to can the defense hold them, and they couldn't. The defense could not hold them. Lots to work on. Lots, lots to work I mean, Ole Miss put up 55 points on LSU. LSU put on 49 points. Again, nine times out of ten, when your team scores forty-nine points, you're supposed to win the ball game. You're supposed to win the ball game. That is just absolutely horrendous defense by the LSU Tigers. I am not used to seeing an LSU team with that future of a defense. It is just truly, it, it's unimaginable to be honest with you guys. I'm used to seeing LSU being a lockdown defense. And delivering pain every time someone touches the ball. 
I have I, I don't know how they they brought in Pete Jenkins, legendary defensive line coach, who retired back in 2017. They brought him on to be a defensive analyst, maybe to help with the defensive line, defensive side of the ball. But I don't even know if that's going to be enough. You have seven games left. If you win out, you have a chance to maybe get up to at least a six ranking. You're playing a bunch of ranked teams. You're playing a bunch of ranked teams. If you beat them all, you have a chance to move up fairly quickly if you do it in a good, orderly fashion. So there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. A lot, a lot, a lot of things that need to be fixed for both LSU and the Saints. For the Saints, you have to fix the offense. If you don't get it fixed, I'm sure – Mickey's going to clean house after the year. If you don't fix the defense this year for LSU, you have seven games to fix it. Don't waste this talent on offense. You have a championship offense. Get it together, please. And that, you guys, that's my rant for today's episode. But before I go, I'd like to say don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. How about that? Turn on the notifications for this channel. Be uh, be sure to share each link that I post. Share on all your social media pages because this does not happen without your guy, you guys, this views. Need those views, you guys. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and look at me. Look for me on Facebook. Wow, I can't talk today. <laughs> A lot of random. Follow me on. Twitter and Instagram at the Soul Man 57, Soul spelled S O U L. Look for just search my name on Facebook, Logan Graffia, G R A F F I A. So, with that being said, you guys, I am Logan Graffia. This has been another great edition of Sports A2 Fay. I shall see you guys next time.